It's hard for me to look back. You know, as, as somebody that's been in the in this job for 12 years, I can look back probably 15 and give insight from there. You know, the stuff prior, I have to lean on historians. What I've seen is just members of Congress, because that's who I'm around, but I'd say more generically Republican leaders, that just for some reason, somewhere, it all became about power. And it all became about fear. And Donald Trump brought heaps of fear into the Republican Party. For like a year or two, people thought maybe we could take down Donald Trump. When he kept surviving, this fear came through of like, we have to do everything he wants because he is invulnerable. And he very well may be invulnerable, but there are a lot of people that with that fear sold out their soul because they didn't want to be kicked out of the tribe. So there's, it, it's a very intriguing discussion. And I'm just sitting here shaking my head like, yeah, amen, that's true. You know, what's so bizarre for me, Adam, is seeing how <laughs> what is conservative has been redefined. You know, I, I always, you know, I just stopped fighting it a long time ago. Um, but, you know, I had a lifetime 95, 96 percent ACU rating, conservative rating, one of the tops in a very conservative class of 1994. Liz Cheney, I think, has a lifetime 95, 96 percent conservative rating. Uh, you know, people will have discussions, start discussions about illegal immigration, and I'll go, well, yeah, I'm against that. If you cross the border and the first thing you do is illegal, you should be arrested and you should send back home. They go, why are you talking that way? I thought you were a lib. You know, or if they talk about defunding the cops. No, I actually, I think cops need to be supported a lot more. We need to reform policing. We need to take the bad cops out, but we need more cops. We need more money, and that will help the most disadvantaged Americans uh, that are facing it. You just go down the list. I'm a conservative, you're a conservative. Liz Cheney's a conservative on all the issues. But what's shocking to me is, again, the very people who said, I'll vote for you because you're a conservative and you believe in a one, two, three, four. They don't talk about that anymore. It's are you for the failed reality TV show host? The guy who lost the White House, the Senate and the House for Republicans? Or are you for the failed reality TV host? And nothing else matters. It's bizarre. Oh, you're 100 percent right. It's interesting. So I get elected in 2010. The number of people that came up to me and they'd put their shoulder around me and go like, you know, Adam, don't go Washington. You be an independent. You do what you think is right. Now are the ones like, Adam, I can't believe you're doing what you think is right. And you're all independent of the Republican Party. It's interesting because also in 2010, there are all those people that would say, like, I'm not a Republican. I'm a conservative before I'm a Republican are now the people that I'm saying like to them, I'm actually a conservative before I'm a Republican because our party has gone crazy. It is amazing to watch when you came here, the holier than thou, and you know these people, the holier than thou folks that get elected to Congress, that preach to you constantly about the Constitution, what's in it, what isn't in it, how this little nuance does abide by it or doesn't abide by it. We all believe in the Constitution. They're the same people that have sold out their values because the Donald Trump said to do so. They're the same people that now consider conservatism to be that fealty to Donald Trump. And by the way, to my Democratic friends, I get it. You know, sometimes you can sit around, you expect different of us, and then we're, you find out we're conservative or moderate and you're disappointed. Look, we have all got to come together because if you truly believe democracy is a threat, if you truly believe that, then we need right. an uncomfortable alliance. If you don't believe it, I got it, but then quit pretending like you do. I'm telling you, democracy is a threat and we need uncomfortable alliances. In Congress, well, and Congress, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Will, yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, we're past the point, Willie, where we, we get hung up on ideology. I, I told you where I stand, uh, Willie, I'm talking to Willie now, uh, where I stand, Willie, on illegal immigration, I was always more conservative on illegal immigration than the mainstream of the Republican Party and the Chamber of Commerce and the Wall Street Journal editorial page, right? Uh, and some people may be uncomfortable with that. Okay, I get it. That's right. I think there's chaos at the southern border. I think it's out of control. I think we need... All right, so you may disagree with me. We still have something bigger to worry about, and that is Madisonian democracy. We've got to fight for it. We've got to defend it politically with ideas, and we can't back down. I, I, I just couldn't agree anymore with what the congressman said. Let's have those uncomfortable alliances 
and save this republic, and then we can go back to debating about illegal immigration and cops and everything else uh, down the road. Yeah, and the congressman and his committee, the select committee's work gets at that, of course, at the foundations of our democracy. And, Congressman, we've got some NBC News reporting this morning that you all will have your next hearing on September 28th, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, if my math is right. Can you confirm that? I don't know what I can confirm right now. If the committee's announced, whatever they announce, uh, you know, I'll confirm. Um, we're, we have pretty long meetings today as we're kind of setting down our agenda for the rest of September, for the rest of the year. Uh, That's why we're in D.C. a little bit early. Um, but we're going to, again, do what I think we did very effectively in, earlier in the summer is bring the American people the truth. We have to begin to pivot to writing this report. And really, look, I mean, I... I it's always tough when you're dealing with people that are unwilling to talk to a committee like we've had. DOJ hasn't prosecuted some of these folks. Okay, that's their decision. But there is a point at which, when it comes to the criminality, that's not our role. DOJ has, I think, a pretty fulsome investigation going. Two months ago, I had no clue what was going on. Um, and that's going to be where this baton, so to speak, is handed to, not by us. We may have a criminal referral. I think that's likely. Um, but with their investigation from here out. And uh, look, we've got to hold people to account. If the, if the rule of law says you can attempt a coup as long as you fail, and you won't be held responsible, that is way more dangerous for this country than some, you know, fear of short-term violence or riots in the street.